Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining the Finjan Show. As you may know, we are here to discuss anything and everything about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship ecosystem, and small business development. In today's discussion, I'm going to bring up the idea of entrepreneurship ecosystem development. Throughout my work, and although we've done this in 60 some countries, you really learn from these things only when you reflect and take the time to analyze what had really happened, what did you really plan, and what did you what did happen in between. And reflecting back in many cases from small cities to large cities, to remote areas, to dense areas and everything else in between, I start reflecting what really happened in some of these communities as we first approached them with the concept of creating an entrepreneurial culture that maybe promotes people wanting to start or grow businesses. And later come to reflect back to say, did we only do that to open businesses or did we also change the dynamics in the workforce as well? And what I've come to learn is that we've touched a couple of things. One of them was, of course, the startup community and the small business development. The second part, which was unintentionally touched, was the whole workforce development and the whole economic in the area. So let's back up. How do you even set up an entrepreneurship ecosystem in a city, country, or anything else in between? Well, what we realized is it takes a couple of components. And as we all know, Babson College, Jen, Kaufman, and many other organizations have their own models of how to do that and look at it from a, from a higher, higher level, which is, you know, Babson model six components in the entrepreneurship ecosystem. I'm going to talk about more on the technical or slash practical way of approaching it. And I do believe that you need both to make this work to understand what are those components and then to understand on a day-to-day -day what needs to happen. So the first thing we notice is you needed some kind of a place to gather, whether it's virtual or in person, ideally of course in person and a little bit of virtual today. And what you wanna do is bring someone that could brings people together. The idea is to simplify and open up the minds of how entrepreneurship can be a pathway for many to follow. Now, we all know that generally speaking in the, publication, in the population of any city or country, you're looking at no more than 12% of the community to be an entrepreneurship uh, in the entrepreneurship space. So this could mean that, you know, maybe 8%, 10%, 6%, 5%, and I've seen as little as less than 1% of the community in the entrepreneurial space. But when you start digging deeper, you might realize that many might be doing, I'm going to call it entrepreneurial endeavor, but not necessarily officially be an entrepreneur or a small business that could be counted for. But these things actually can make a big impact in the community because a lot of times they hire people for part-time work, they hire people for weekend jobs, they hire people for them to make extra cash that allows them to do either improvement in their homes, take vacations, or something like that. And what I want to do is highlight how you could create this entrepreneurship ecosystem in your community with some simple steps. So first step is find someone that could bring things together. That person also, or individuals, doesn't have to be one, could be a group of people, needs to also make things a little bit simplified a little bit easier to understand, a little bit more easy to communicate between others, as well as bring others to have a discussion. And it's important to know that you all don't have to agree on some key terminology. As a matter of fact, it's good for you to disagree, as long as you're not fighting, of course. <laughs> so make sure that you are, you know, finding that kind of individual or group of people. The second is you want to think about setting up a, some kind of I'm going to call it formal education or slash professional education program that could bring people together to learn specific ideas that they could discuss. And before we go to the next one, let's take a break and we'll be right back after these short messages. All 
All right, welcome back. So as was, uh, we were discussing earlier, we would do the second thing, which is having a structure formal program. This could be an educational training. This could be a mentorship program. This could be a, a series of presentations, whatever you want to call it. A professional program would be really good. We have done this in many countries and we usually use some of our own curriculums that we have developed throughout the years that are focused on minority or immigrant groups, such as exploring entrepreneurship, Ignite, and many others. You also could use some of the, you know, I'm gonna call it out of the box programs such as Fast Track, Kaufman, and many others out there. And we've been fortunate to use many of them through our programs as well. As a matter of fact, we were able to create a whole schedule of how to do that from step one to step 10 or whatever you wanna to go to. <laughs> All right, so now that you have a you know, person or a group that brings people together for a discussion, the second is to have a structure program that could bring people or a small subgroup to, to discuss their businesses. A third is you want to have what I'm going to call aftercare, or maybe you could call it, you know, alumni program or engagement program, whatever you want to call it. And basically, this is maybe a monthly series or a quarterly series that brings people together. What I would suggest is look at the community and what brings the community together for a specific thing. For example, some of the cities we worked in, they had like a light festival. Some others had a water festival. Some others had a, you know, art festival. And think about, can you leverage what's already there to bring people an hour or two before, before they could join that evening, that festival. So for example, let's say there is a event that's happening that's really big that a lot of people will come to from five to seven, whether it's an art festival, music festival, or anything else, you could say, we're going to have an alumni group, or you could call it a series speaker series, or whatever you want to call it, from four to five, and you invite those individuals how they've gone through the program. In some cases, you might want to invite a broader community, and the broader community could come maybe the hour of the four to five, but then you invite those selected smaller subgroup an hour before or half hour before, because you still want to have them bond in a special meaningful way. So those are the first few steps that you could do to keep it going. In the beginning, the often you do it, the better. Now I will put a star over there, meaning that if you're going to do it weekly and you don't have many people showing up, I would say, think about monthly. If you think monthly is not enough, I would say think about quarterly. So you might want to start with like the latter of quarterly, then semi-monthly, then monthly, and then weekly maybe. And I'm not sure if you ever need weekly, but maybe that at one point you do. But you might want to create what I'm going to call momentum. And that takes a little bit of time. And having it once a month or once a quarter makes it a little bit more special for people to make the effort to be there versus weekly. So that's really how would you want to think about establishing this entrepreneurship ecosystem? Now, of course, we all know that there are whole other things that needs to be happening, such as policy, market, funding, and all kinds of other things. I'm just focusing on how to really start this ball rolling in a community without you having all the resources that you may need to make it work. The last thing I'm going to say is you want to create probably an eco player or ecosystem player in this space. So one of some of them are, and you maybe you could help set up, maybe you could leverage what's already there, places that could allow you to use space. So maybe this is a community college, a university, or a large corporation that allows you to use their space. So therefore they bring in people. Another thing you want to think about is possibly having events in different businesses. So therefore people get to meet the business owners. Uh, that worked really well in many of the places I worked in where they did like a breakfast or bagels or whatever you want to call it uh, from like seven to eight, eight to nine in the morning. And I've seen some after hours, but a lot of times uh, they like the first thing in the morning because they could come meet the business owner, see behind the scenes, some of these uh, businesses in their community, and then get to network with each other. You might want to always have, I'm going to call it uh, some kind of central piece for people to speak about or learn from. So 
having a speaker for 10, 15 minutes, a panel discussion, 10, 15 minutes. Don't make it two hours because, you know, that could be potentially a driver away for, from your event, unless you're doing an event for that or a series for that. It's a different story. But generally speaking, you want to do a little bit of that, maybe 15 to 30 minutes, and then the rest of the time, let the people network so they could talk and meet each other. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Much more to discuss on this topic. Till then, have a good day. Thank you for joining. Looking forward to seeing you soon.